Please stand. That's one of my favorite hymns. I long for the day we can sing it together again. So y'all keep practicing at home for that day. Our service will begin on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together on page 356 we will say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the second book of Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elisha and Elisha were on their way from Gilgad. Elisha said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, You know that today the Lord is going to take your master away from you. And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elisha said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, But as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, You know that today the Lord will take your master away from you. And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. But Elisha said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. 
Fifty men of the Company of Prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. And then Elisha took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elisha said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing yet. If you see me as I am taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elisha ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the righteousness of his cause, for God himself is judge. A reading from the book of 2 Corinthians. If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses <clears throat> who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. 
let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. I don't know if you caught it in the colic, so I want to I read it again so you can pay attention really closely. O oh God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed His glory upon the mountain, the transfiguration, right? That's what we just read in the Gospel. Grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness. To be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. It's a very, very bold prayer that we prayed this morning. Please let us behold Christ... Let us see him, and in, in, in what we see when he is transfigured, let it inspire and power and move us more toward his likeness from glory to glory. We are praying that we too shall be transfigured. What? Hold on, Ashley. Jesus got transfigured, not me, not us. We couldn't be transfigured. It was Jesus that was transfigured, right? But we're baptized into Christ Jesus. And so what is true for Christ Jesus is ultimately true for us as his followers as well. Let us be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Let us be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Well, what does it take? What does it take for us to change into His likeness from glory to glory? And, you know, there's a whole host of answers we could give. The simple one would be, you know, and this is the one we, we usually go with, right? Well, we need to be faithful. If we're faithful, we'll be changed into, into, the, into the likeness of Christ. And that's not a wrong answer. It's just being faithful is a pretty broad statement, right? What does it mean to be faithful? What does it mean to be the people who follow Christ? What does it mean to actually follow Christ into His likeness from glory to glory? And certainly being faithful people is a part of that. But what else? And I think this text, in this Mark's text here, and you know, Mark is the gospel that doesn't give you a lot of details, right? Mark's the one that's like really, in, he's really in, concerned about telling you the story, but he, he doesn't necessarily stop and give you all the details. When we read this in Matthew and Luke's Gospels, we get different accounts. There's more detail. But in Mark's Gospel, he took these three up on a high mountain. This thing happened. Now he went back down the mountain and told them to keep the mouth shut. <laughs> it's pretty quick, right? It's like this long. But there's some really key parts in this, right? Just, just a few verses before this passage, we have Jesus talking with the disciples we have him ex explaining to them that, yes, I'm the Messiah. Peter is the one that says, you're the Messiah, the Son of God, right? And then Jesus then tells them, and the, and, the, and the Messiah, me, the Son of God, I have to go and I will die, but in three days I'll be raised from the dead. And Peter says to him, not in my lifetime that ain't happening, boss. We ain't doing that. Not happening. And Jesus says to him, Get behind me, Satan. Y'all remember this passage? Y'all remember this story? Now, here we are again. He's taking Peter, 
along with James and John, to the top of this mountain, and they've seen Jesus transfigured, an affirmation yet again of who Jesus is, right? They already have figured out that Jesus is the Messiah. They figured it out in the last chapter. John said, I mean, excuse me, Peter said, you're the Messiah. But in their mind, they still think the Messiah is the perfect Jewish person who's coming into the world and going to lead a revolt and going to run Rome out of Israel and the, the proper king will be restored to the throne. And you, you know, we get these passages also where they, they ask Jesus who will be at his right hand and who will be at his left, right? And the only reason that question makes any sense is if you think that Jesus has come to lead some sort of, some sort of military assault against the, the occupying forces, and when it's all said and done and Jesus has done his deal, somebody's got to be his right and left hand. Might, might as well be us. You see it? Peter hasn't figured it out. This is the same reason Peter says, no, you, you can't die. I'm not letting that happen, because if you die, how can you lead a military force and take back Israel? So no, that can't happen. And he still doesn't quite get what Jesus is doing. And here at the top of the mountain during the transfiguration, he still doesn't get it. He doesn't get it because what do we see Peter do? And what do we see James and John do with him? They cower in fear and they say, ooh, It'd be really good for us to stay here, so why don't we make three dwelling places? One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and we'll stay here. We'll stay right here. We'll stay in this mountaintop. We'll stay in this experience. We'll stay in this place that feels like you're the Messiah. We'll stay in this place where it's really easy for us to tell people that you're the Messiah. We'll stay in this place where it's pretty clear that you are powerful and that you are about to do to these Romans what they deserve. We will stay in this place that scares us to death. And so we're coward in fear, but we recognize in it that you are the Messiah that we want. You're the Messiah that we want. You're the Messiah who is all-powerful. You're the Messiah who is going to do the things that we think the way they should be done. You're the Messiah who's come to give Rome and all of those who would oppose Israel what they deserve. Let us stay here. They don't understand what Jesus is doing. And at the end of this passage today, as they're headed down the mountain, Jesus again reminds them that His job as the Messiah is not what they are expecting. Tell no one of these things until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. They still don't get it. They still don't get it. And there's a huge contrast between their behavior and Jesus', Jesus behavior in this, con, in this text today. There's a huge contrast. Jesus walks right back down the mountain directly into His passion. We even prayed it in the colic, Right? Almighty God, who before your Son went into His passion, revealed Himself in His transfiguration. Christ Jesus was transfigured to teach the disciples something about what God is doing in the world. And then He went from that transfigured mountaintop experience straight into His passion. Straight into the depths of sorrow. Straight into the hurt and the pain that humans could bear. He went straight to the cross. He went down the mountain from the highest part down to the lowest possible valley. He went to the grave. And he didn't do it for his own benefit, but he does it for the benefits of others. Jesus recognizes and sees that his ministry is about loving those around him, even if that love pushes him all the way to a cross, all the way to a grave. He is transfigured just before he steps into his passion. He is transfigured just before he most clearly displays that his love and his ministry and his life is about those around him. He is transfigured to his glory, to his greatness, just before he goes off and does the acts that will save the world. 
He's transfigured into the most powerful looking thing that he could possibly be. Just before he goes into the weakest and most shameful place it appeared that he could be. He's transfigured. He's made to look. He's shown His power, His glory. is shown to these disciples on this mountain. And He takes that power and that glory and He immediately turns to the deep, meaningful relationships and loves that He has for the world and walks into His passion. Meanwhile, on the top of the mountain, James, and Peter, and John want to stay there. They haven't figured out yet that this life in Christ is one that calls them to take up their cross and follow Him into the valley. They haven't figured out yet that this life in Christ is not the Messiah you think you're getting. This life in Christ is not one that is about being powerful and strong and in charge and in control, but that this life in Christ is one that is about submitting ourselves, about serving others, about loving people until it hurts, about taking on the call that Christ has laid upon us, and about walking into the life that God has created for us. And that life includes a transfigured experience at the top of the mountain. But that transfigured experience at the top of the mountain is intended to reveal to the world what God is doing so that the world can move into the realities of what God is calling us to. Almighty God, who before Your Son's passion was transfigured upon the mountain, Let us who follow Him have the courage and the strength and the will to do so and to be transfigured ourselves from glory into glory. Let us put away the fear that keeps us wanting to stay at the top of the mountain in control and in power and letting everyone know that we have it all together. Letting everyone know that our life is special and that somehow or another we are more like God than you because we are up here at the top of this mountain. But instead empower us to turn to walk down the mountain into life. Down the mountain into hurt. Down the mountain into brokenness. Down the mountain into human suffering. Down the mountain into pain and grief. Down the mountain into God's love so that our lives and the lives of those around us can indeed be transfigured. The life that God is calling us to in Christ Jesus will never, ever be one that calls us to stay at the top of the mountain in control and in power and the strongest and the best and whatever else you can think to describe that is worldly. But as followers of Christ Jesus, for us to experience this transfigured life, for us to be who God has made us to be, for us to truly be transformed from glory into glory, we must follow Christ down the mountain. We must follow Christ into our life, into wherever it leads us. We must take up our cross, follow Christ into the depths of the brokenness of the world around us, knowing full and well that it's not our power It's not our strength. It's not our need to be in control. It's not what we want that will indeed save the world. It's not who we want God to be that indeed shares God's love in the world. But it's who God is in Christ Jesus. It's who God is through us when we live this life in this world that reveals who God is at the top of the mountain because people experience God in the depths of the valley. And they experience God in the hurt and the pain of this life. And when we do it the way we are called to, when we live into what it means to be transfigured into Christ Jesus, in the midst of their hurt and their pain and their grief and the suffering of this world, we somehow are able to be messengers of God's love and God's hope and God's grace in those places. And all we have to do is stop wanting to stay at the top of the mountain and be willing to pick up our cross and to follow Christ into the depths of the valley 
regardless of where it takes us. Together, let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with his scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Forum 3, are found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church, especially for the congregations of our companion diocese of Tohoku in Japan, may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Morris, our bishop, James and Charles, our retired bishops, Ashley, our priest, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on Chris, Bertha, Francis, Denise and family, Dela, Hen Helen, the Fenneman family, the Fontenot family, Aaron, Alex, Bishop Jenkins, the Jenkins family, Carlette, Ricky, MacArthur, David, Jane, the Pinnock family, and the rest of those on our long-term prayer list, which can be found in our emailed newsletter, and all those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed, especially Wayne, Kylan, and Zodine, and Leona Deemer, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray you watch over all those serving our country, especially Christian, Tannis, Austin, Reese, Denise, Edward, Matthew, Denver, Jamie, and Chance. We give you thanks for the blessings of this life, especially those celebrating birthdays, Carter, Luke, Rhonda, 
Michael Ronald, and those celebrating anniversaries, Richard and Allison. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace. 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 If you're at home, I invite you to share the peace in the comments below. Well, good morning again, everyone. <clears throat> a few quick announcements. First, if you are visiting with us either in person or online today, welcome. We're very glad that you're here. We would love for you to let us know that you're here either by dropping some um, information in the basket or by uh, letting us know in the comments or sending us a message on Facebook or email or whatever works for you. Um, our Wednesday evening Bible study resumed this past week, and it will continue again next Wednesday, but this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, so we won't have Bible study this coming Wednesday because in... We'll be having our Ash Wednesday service, which I'm going to talk about in just a moment. Um, and then <clears throat> um, our deadline to vote for the annual meeting budget approval was this past Wednesday. When I looked this past Wednesday, um, y'all going to make me, I forgot to write the information down, but we had some, uh, I think, 48 responses on Wednesday morning, which is enough for us to have a quorum and enough um, so the budget did, was approved online. I appreciate all of you participating this way. I know that that made for a very weird annual meeting and um, very quick annual meeting, but very weird. So um, maybe we'll use videos in the future, but I look forward to maybe next year being able to gather again um, in our more traditional manner to do our annual meeting. Um, altar flower schedules in the back. If you're interested in, in uh, providing flowers on any particular Sunday during the year, please fill out the, the, uh, the schedule in the back by the, by the rope for the, the bell. Um, <clears throat> we will start our Lenten Stations of the Cross every Friday at 6.30. Um, you know, that I decided to do that this year. I know we're still trying to social distance, but that's usually a fairly small crowd. So if we can, you know, if, if we have our normal six to eight people show up, we, we can separate and stay socially distanced appropriately and also do the Stations of the Cross. So um, that's the way we plan on doing that. Um, I'm assuming, I haven't asked, but I'm assuming Edgar will participate in that like he always does. So thank you, Edgar. Um, <clears throat> the Easter lily order and uh, dedication cards um, are back at the uh, front of the church, please, um, or back by the doors. Please fill those out if, you're, uh, if you'd like to provide Easter lilies. Um, <clears throat> and let's see, the offertory, as we have been doing, and I think it's custom now, guys, is up here because we can't pass the basket. So when you come up for communion, drop your offering in the basket. Um, if you've paid or if you've given online or whatever, please drop one of the little green cards in the basket so that we have a record of your... Of, to look for. And if you'd like information on how to give online, just take one of the green cards back to the pew with you. If you're watching at home and you'd like to give online, uh, the information can be found at the beginning of this video, um, and it's also on our website, so check it out. Um, and then if you're not receiving our Wednesday newsletters, especially this time because we're communicating so much stuff electronically, if you're not getting those every week, um, let Jessica or myself know and we'll double check your email on the, on the constant contact, the, the service that we use to do those emails because sometimes for some reason emails get lost in the ether and I don't know why. Um, 
<clears throat> and then, we, um, like I, I've already mentioned, the uh, Stations of the Cross, um, Ash Wednesday. We will do our Ash Wednesday service here at 6.30. That gives the school time to close and people to leave, and then we can, we can uh, gather together. Now, the impositions of ashes this year, since we're still in this um, coronavirus uh, place, we won't actually be imposing ashes on your forehead during the Ash Wednesday service. We have the ashes. Um, they're in these little, well, they will be, they're not yet, but they will be in these little lip balm containers, and you will take the ashes with you, and you can either impose the ashes on each other's head in your family or yourself here in the church, or you can take them home with you. Um, and then I think I'm going to do ashes to go at one of the coffee houses as well and give those same ashes out. Just not, um, you know, given that we're dealing with a respiratory virus, get respiratory virus, getting close enough to people to impose their foreheads is just still a little dangerous. So um, we're not, we're not going to do that. Um, but we will have our service, which means that we can also do ashes to go and communion to go on Wednesday night as well. So we're going to do church here at 630. That service will be over likely around 7.20 to 7.30, you know, depending. Um, and then we're from 7.30 to 8 o'clock, we're going to have ashes and communion to go. So you can come like you do on a Sunday morning, pick up your ashes, pick up your communion, and go home. And then I'm going to upload the service that we record at 6.30 and play it back at 8 o'clock on Wednesday night for those who would participate at home. So if you want to participate in ashes and communion to go for Wednesday night, Please let us know. Send us an email. There's going to be more information sent out this afternoon in a, in a standalone email about Ashes, Ash Wednesday and Ashes to Go and Communion to Go. But it's really simple, guys. Just let us know that that's how you want to participate. We'll have it ready for you at the back of the church. You pull through between 7.30 and 8, pick it up, go home at 8 o'clock, watch service, participate in Ash Wednesday. So that's, that's particularly for those of you who are at home. And I believe that is it in the way of announcements. Am I forgetting anything, Beth? Oh, and I even have it written down on here. Um, we have partnered with uh, Pete Williams Barbecue, uh, who is it's owned and operated by Mr. Jermaine Williams. Um, he was a gentleman who cooked, um, if you remember back at Christmas, he did, he did some uh, like 200 meals out of our parking lot. He asked if we could do that, and we, they set up and they fried chicken, did red beans and rice, and fed some 200 people one day. And then he came and he cooked for us for the, uh, for the, for the tailgate party that we had for the, the national championship game. There was less of us there because the weather was so bad, but that's okay. He still cooked. It was good food. He is going to partner with us on the 20th of this month, which is this coming Saturday, the 6th of March and the 20th of March. So that's three Saturdays in Lent. He's going to set up right in the parking lot. We're going to fry fish. We're going to sell fish plates. You're going to drive through, pick them up, take them home. Um, the information about that was shared online last night. Um, it will continue to be circulated, but there's a link there that would really help out. If you plan on getting fish plates, it would really help if you went to that link and just said, yes, we're coming on this day, and this is how many plates we'd like, so that we can have some type of a head count, so we know how much fish to buy, because, you know, just shooting in the dark is kind of hard, and fish ain't cheap, y'all. So, um, please, if you're planning on participating on the 20th, the 6th, or the 20th, um, please see that on Facebook. You'll see it in your, um, in your inbox on email as well, and please fill that link out and let us know. Uh, it'd be really helpful if you want to, like, come this Saturday, if you let us know by Wednesday, because that's when I have to order the fish. It is really good. I'll tell you what, he, he fried enough fish for like 40 people at the, at the football party, and we had like 12 people who came and ate, and I gave away fish, and everybody I gave it away to told me they'd pay me for it. So um, it's, it's really, really good. He's really good at what he does. So come out, and, uh, and, and you know, all, the, all of the, the proceeds that we raised there are going to, to support the mission and the, and the ministry here at St. Patrick's. So please um, come out and support, and please tell your friends. That I'd love to sell, you know, 200 plates of, of Saturday. It'd be great. We'll see how that works. Um, last but certainly not least is birthdays and anniversaries. If we're celebrating a birthday and anniversary, please stand. I know we have some. Well, we're going to pray anyway, so let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the many blessings of this life. We thank you in this moment, especially for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We pray that you would be with them as they begin another year. Give them a sense of your love and grace wherever they may be. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon them this day and remain with them always. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
and Valentine's Day sometime, which is Happy Valentine's Day. You ain't forgot it. Yeah. And they're going to get you. Please stand. <clears throat> Our service will continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before He died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when He had given thanks to you, He broke it, gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Patrick, Valentine, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, firstborn of all creation, the head of our church, and the altar, author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the faith. Hallelujah. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keeping everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us all in everlasting life. Using the post-communion prayer found on page 366. Together, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank You for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Your Son and heirs of Your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work You have given us to do, to love and serve You as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to Him, to You, and to the Holy Spirit. Be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
That's good. That's funny. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Maybe next time. Next